Well then, Bunny, let's talk about books. You see, people always say, hey, Steve, how have you and Natasha, your wife, how have you two been uh, stayed married for as long as you two have? To which I say, shh, shut the fuck up. <laughs> Don't remind her that she is still married to me. Don't give Natasha any ideas. <laughs> Just shh, ixnay on the arid may. <laughs> People also say, hey, write what you know. And what I know is that if... If the Netflix if the Netflix movie Bright, if Bright was real life, yes, then every 80s stand-up comedian would sound like this. You ever notice how humans be walking like this? <laughs> but then elves, see, elves, they be walking like this. <laughs> And why are orcs always eating burritos? <laughs> and what I also know is that I have been a loyal and hyper inactive employee at my local bookstore. FYI, hyper inactive verbal copyright 2008, the Pope on film 2018, the Pope on film podcast, all rights rightfully reserved for over 17 years now. Yes. If my career were a person, then I would be in that awkward, panicky year between Sweet Little 16 and I don't have to listen to you. <laughs> that awkward, that awkward period. It's a transitional time. Yeah. I'm Sweet 16. I a, want all of this and I love you, Daddy. And then there's I'm going to go smoke some pot and give hand jobs. You can't hold me back, you son of a bitch. <laughs> it's a transitional time. And so, uh, Emerald's going with the hand jobs? I don't know. A, a, a Emerald is an enigma. Okay. Well, she is an enigma. So she's a wonderful, she's a, she's a, she's, she's a wonderful woman. And that's about all I know. <laughs> and as such, I really do have my skeletal fingers on the pulse of the book world. And I am here to rub my skeletal fingers across your chest with this week's educationally uneducated installment of Notes from the bookstore. Dun, dun, dun. Good, because I had written in here, give me some dramatic music, Bunny. But <laughs> you, because we have this psychic bond. Yes. You and I, you knew that that's what I was going for. And you just you just went for it. Nothing but net. <laughs> I am such a speaking of nothing but net. Speaking of uh, vague sports generalities i realized today that the super bowl was coming up okay is it all right yeah 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 um yeah in a few days and i'm like wow i am not a good dude you know <laughs> yeah i am really not gonna get my bro license this year I've only ever, not only do I not even know when the Super Bowl is coming up, but like I've only ever seen one Transformer movie. Ah, yeah, that's I, another, I saw a part of one and that's all it took for me. Yeah, that's another example of my bro license being, being going to be revoked. I don't know the band The Chainsmokers. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I'm not a good bro. And this week's Notes from the Bookstore is brought to you by the all-new For Dummies series of books. Because, Bonnie, yes. 
The For Dummies series has been around since the first book, DOS for Dummies, was published in 1991. And that was a long time oh, ago. No, I think we got to go back further on the dummy books, but you're, you're the pro here. Yeah, I looked it up. DOS for Dummies, 1991. There's also the like the idiot's guide. I think the idiot's guide might actually be might actually be older than the for dummies series. Hmm. But people have changed, Bunny. Society has changed. Yes. People have moved on. So be sure and buy the first book in the all new for dummies series entitled Beginner's Chess for Clueless Shitheads. <laughs> Talk about hashtag progress, am I right? Yeah. Huh? There's also a brand new series of political titles. There's uh there's two so far. There's Trumpism for Cucks. Okay. And then there's how to be a do how to be a decent human being for right wing Christian assholes. Yes. So thank, really excited. Thank God they finally got a got a book. I cause really Yeah. Yeah. Christians. Yeah. So persecuted. Now, an episode or two ago, or four or 42, who can tell time anymore in Trump's America? Yeah. We're all in a bizarre time warp. Hoping for escape. <laughs> yeah. But an unknown amount of time ago, we did an in memoriam for all of the people, places, and things that we lost in 2017, like Mary Tyler Moore, yes. AOL Instant Messenger, and Decorum. Mm -hmm. Things that we lost in 2017. Well, I would like to do a different sort of in-memoriam, but this time around, we are going to in-memoriam all of the businesses that are or were or are going to be uh, leaving the area near my bookstore. Okay. All of all of the businesses that w were around my bookstore that are now long gone. The neighborhood that my work is in, it used to be the cool place for businesses to be. Yeah. But but n now it's uh, slowly bleeding businesses now the cool place for a business to be is about five, four or five miles away. It's that area, that shopping area with the super target and the five guys restaurant. That place is exploding with business. And unfortunately that means that my area is imploding with business. Yes. So let's take a fond look back at all of the businesses we've lost. First off pro cuts hair salon. Uh huh. Okay. I guess it's I don't know more of the professional supercuts. I don't know. It's basic. It was basically just a supercuts, but with the word pro. I got my hair cut there once. I was I was having I had really long hair. It was uh, maybe about a year year and a half into my time working uh, at the Oklahoma location. And it, th my hair had just gotten too long and it started to annoy me. So I went to the haircut place and a, I, I wanted it all chopped off. And the really nice gay guy who cut my hair mm -hmm. kept giving me outs because he liked my hair so much. Okay. That he's like, you want to get your hair cut? Your hair? Are you <laughs> sure? Are you sure, though? Okay. <laughs> I mean, if you're sure, okay. Because once I cut it, that's it. If that's what you want to do with your hair. And I'm like, hey, okay, okay. Uh, I'm really susceptible to counter-programming. So the more outs you give me, the more I am g angrily going to demand you cut my hair. Yeah. So, like, it just doesn't work that way with me. Shit, this child is possessed. Oh, are you talking about Eleanor or are you going to show me something on the computer? I'm talking about Eleanor. Okay. I am going to show you something. Okay, what are you going to show me? I'm doing an in memoriam for all of the businesses that are no longer around my work. Thayer asked me. Mommy! Uh, Mommy. Thayer's uh, asexual. 
and doesn't understand this, but apparently he finds this action incredibly hot. I can't explain it. I cannot explain it. Uh, The only thing I can think is that it's because it's Dean, or it was because he's bending down over the pool table, and the way that he moves his hands, it's like he's bracing for impact. It's like he's about to get. Yeah, it's a. Yeah, it's it's like it's like Dean's about to get banged. I saw and also it. the way I that this the other way, like and also the way would think that they were the balls, basically. No, and also the way that <laughs> that his wrists are together. It <laughs> seems like he's like, like, I don't know, like he's getting handcuffed or someone's tying him together. But it definitely looks like he's about to take something. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Do I find that hot? No. Okay. See, we're taking a poll. Of- but I can see how someone would. Find that See hot. How someone would. Okay, yeah. Ow! Go. <clears throat> so, uh, uh, rest in peace, Pro Cuts. Pro Cuts is gone. Uh, a, here's another business that is gone, yeah. that was by my work, that is no longer there. Marble Slab Creamery. Marble okay, guys. Marble Slab Creamery. Okay. Okay. Guys. I, I, guys. Guys. I have a great business idea, okay? It is new and original, and you guys are going to like it. Okay, so you know Cold Stone Creamery? Okay, so here's my original idea. Let's just do that. (laughs) What should we call it? I don't know. Just a marble slab creamery. I don't know. It doesn't matter. Anyway, we're just going to Cold Stone it, okay? That's my new original idea. It's not McDonald's, it's McDougal's. Yes. It's a totally original idea. We have the so, golden arc. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, rest in peace, Marble Slab Creamery, you're no longer there. Uh, here's another business that is gone. A1 Formal Rental. It was oh. like a tuxedo, fancy dress, rental place. And you can tell that the business, you can tell a business has been there for a long time when they are named in a way so that they will be the first name listed in the yellow pages. Yes. (laughs) Like I used to go to the comics, to a comic book store called AAA All About Books and Comics. Yeah. And that's how it was named, AAA, All About Books and Comics. And it took me a while to realize, like, oh, wait a second. This is uh, AA Auto Repair. Why is this A1 Formal Rental? That's confusing. Okay, you don't need to be named that anymore. No. It's weird. So when it comes to A1 Formal Rental, let's talk about tornadoes. Okay. Okay. There are levels of tornado warnings that they give. The weather's kind of getting bad. So then there's like a tornado watch, which is, uh, or tornado, which is, hey guys, a tornado could happen. It probably won't, but still just be aware of tornadic activity. Tornadic activity. Yeah, I hear that a lot. A possibility for tornadic activity in the area so be aware of that that's a tornado watch just watch for them and then the, and then a tornado warning is okay guys uh it seriously looks like it could happen still probably won't but but have a heightened uh level of preparedness maybe uh you know make sure you have a shelter or know where a shelter is nearby because there's a very high chance for tornadic activity, guys. Tornadic activity. And then there's the sirens. And it took me a while to be comfortable with the sirens because it took a number of of uh, siren attempts to realize that just because the sirens go off does not mean... They, the sirens are not 100% accurate. Because yeah. I've dealt with the sirens going off like about four or five times in my six or seven years six years yeah. in Oklahoma and I've never been in a tornado, but I've been in the sirens a number of times. The first time I had to deal with a siren, I was at work and uh, one thing I have learned about living in Oklahoma 
is that the pastime, the state pastime for Okies is storm watching. Okay. Like a when a big massive storm hits or when the the tornado sirens go off, 50% of the people panic and look for shelter and the other 50% get out fucking lawn chairs. <laughs> And every time there's an actual tornado touching down, there's always accidents. And the accidents happen because these professional storm chasers go out to chase the storm. And, oh, wait, uh, there's five guys in pickup trucks also chasing it. And those are the amateur storm chasers. (laughs) That's Billy Bob and Bubba who, you know, you know, get a hankering in their craw every time a big storm's coming. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I was at work and the storm was really bad and the storm was so bad. And this was maybe about six or seven months into me living in Oklahoma. The storms were so bad that everybody at work was just against the windows looking at the storm. Uh Uh-huh. Okay. It was raining really bad. It was coming down really bad. And it was around April or May. Kind of of like Dean about to get it, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. So it was round about prom time. And so the storm is really bad. And like the lightning was so bad that the windows would just rattle every time there was thunder and lightning. So I'm trying to shelve and trying to be at work and trying to not panic. And so I, I, I decide, you know what? Everybody else is doing it. I'm going to go over to the windows and start looking out the windows with everybody else. And everybody's just standing there looking out the windows. And then the sirens hit. Now, the good news is, is that our specific store, our bathrooms are fortified steel that should survive a tornado. Yes. So essentially, our men's and women's bathroom are a tornado shelter. And so now I've become so comfortable in Oklahoma and around tornadic activity with finger quotes that now when the storms start hitting, I, I I'm really good at comforting college students. Uh huh. See, I, I don't know. I, I kind of feel like you're used to whatever your area's weird ass weather pattern is, you know? Yeah. So growing up mostly on long Island, we had hurricanes and hurricane season was a big fucking deal. Yeah. You know? So because of that, I don't give much of a shit about hurricanes. Yeah. You know, yeah. I- I'm used to it. I know what's going on. The eye of the storm is amazing. <laughs> yeah. It's amazing. Uh, <clears throat> but like, well, like an earthquake would terrify me. Oh, God. Yeah, no, I've been in a number of earthquakes. Those aren't good. I I, I think I would be okay with a tornado because it's kind of a hurricane. I'm not sure, though. You know? I've never been in one either, so I can't tell you. Yeah. I've been near. I've been near them. But I've never been in one. Yeah. So I'm, I'm just worried because so far this December and January... And looks like this February, we haven't gotten snow. It's been hot. Yesterday it was like seventy three degrees, and and sunny. It looks like it, this time last year I was dealing with ice and sleet and nasty roads and yeah. you know hydroplaning and floods and it was just horrible. And just this year it's just all been hot. And it looks like I might be able to get to spring without any nasty winter weather but now i'm just worried that oh well if it's going to be hotter then probably the tornado season is going to be like four times worse if i'm not getting snow and ice Uh uh-huh yeah then i'm worried that like my march april and may and june are just going to be filled with freaking tornadoes and i'm not excited about that but I, i i would not be excited about that either yeah So I'm at work and I'm looking through the windows at the storm and then the tornado siren hits and I, everyone starts panicking, but I can't stop looking out of the windows 
because what I see, and I'm not that scared. The sirens go off and I'm like, okay, well, I've been prepared for this. People have ta- told me what to do. I just need to go to the bathrooms and uh, wait it out there with the customers, make sure the customers are calm and we should be fine, right? But then as I'm thinking this in my head, I see a group of nine teens run panicked and screaming out of a one formal rental. (laughs) Mostly girls. And they're screaming that high pitched scream that you hear girls do when they're riding a roller coaster. Yeah. That like ear piercing glass breaking. Mm -hmm. I'm waiting in line for splash mountain scream. Yes, I, I, I am f- and, uh, familiar with this screen. Yes, yeah. horrible. So I see, I see these people running out of a one formal rental, running towards our store. And here's the, here's the thing that re- that I remembered: one woman was wearing sandals, and one of her shoes flew off, <laughs> and she kept running. And one of her friends yelled, "Crystal, you left your shoe!" And she said. Forget the fucking shoe. We're going to die. <laughs> okay. Yeah. It was, it was that that panicked me. <laughs> I was totally <laughs> calm until Crystal decided that fuck her shoes. <laughs> so she's running like with just one shoe through a storm. Yeah. You know? And then when the storm passes, you got to go through it, it, and it's still raining, but you got to go through looking for your freaking shoe in the rain. Like that's that's some weird shit there. Now, were they heading for the Barnes and Noble? They were heading towards our store because of our bathrooms. Oh, because of your bathrooms. OK, yeah. I was I was like, I, I was thinking more like they must be smart. They have books. Yeah. Yeah, no. <laughs> we got to go to their tornado section and figure out what to do. <laughs> Hurry, five tornadoes for dummies. <laughs> so A1 formal rental is gone, and that's really sad, because every time a tornado hits, I just picture a, a college girl with, with one shoe panicking. So now A1 formal rental is gone. Super Salad Super is another salad. store. That was by my work. That is not there. I never went to this location, but I've been to other super salads. So I believe that I can say, boo! (laughs) You suck! There was one that was by my work in Sacramento. Yeah. Uh, Natasha loved it. So we would go there all the time. Despite my objections, because I never liked super salad. Hey, I've got an idea for a restaurant. You know all those things that people love to eat? Let's not carry any of them. (laughs) Just carry soup, salad, and various. Doesn't that sound great? (laughs) Well, should we carry burgers? None. What about steak? Nothing. We're not a buffet. We're just a buffet for soup and salad. But we would open, but she would always have to go to the super salad. So we would go to the super salad, and I would get my Steve salad. Uh huh. My family was well aware of my Steve salad. Let me break down a Steve salad for you, okay? Yeah. First off, a small amount of salad. Okay. okay. Uh, no olives because olives are edible buttholes. <laughs> That's what olives are. I hate olives. And then, like when I was when I was like in my late twenties, I got like the, one of those tests where they test you to see if you're allergic to anything. Yeah. And uh, apparently, I'm allergic to olives. And then, it, like a uh, like a uh, Princess Leia being told that Luke is uh, her brother. Like, oh, Steve, did you know you're allergic to olives? Somehow, I've always known. <laughs> That's how much I hated them already. Yeah. So when I learned I was allergic to them, I'm like, yeah, see, that works. I, In fact, I don't think that I was allergic to them. I just think that my hatred for them was so strong. Yeah. That it that made, caused you, it made my your body, body fight back. Yeah. 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 
In fact, within the last two or three years, my wife finally, after almost, I don't know, however long we've been together, 15 years, 16 years together, has finally stopped getting pizza with olives. Okay. It was like a, it was, it was like a, like a decade long fight to get her to not order olives every time. <laughs> well, you don't like olives? Yeah. Since when? Since every time you get freaking pizza, woman! <laughs> Finally, stop. So, small amount of salad, no olives because they're edible buttholes. Um, then you get a crap ton of croutons. Okay. So many croutons, a ridiculous amount of croutons. And then here's here's the really important part to a Steve salad: as much ranch and bacon bits as you can get away with. <laughs> If there is no one who is uh, uh, looking at you, you just keep on going until there's none left. Yeah. Just all the ranch and all of the bacon bits, especially the bacon bits, because that's the good bit of food mm -hmm. you can add to this. So I would get my Steve salad. I would finish that. And then while everyone else is going for like their second and thirds of soup and salad, I'm like, OK, I will see you bitches at the ice cream bar. <laughs> Steve, you're not going to get anything else. What am I going to get? It's a super salad. I've had my salad. I will be spending the rest of this time at the at the ice cream bar. Yeah. I will see you later. So that that was my that was always my super salad experience. Uh huh. I see you bitches at the ice cream station. <laughs> I I have not been to one. We have one. We have one on Garden of the Gods, or at least we used to. Um. Never been there. Never been there. It, you know, if I'm going out to eat, like, super salad is just not what I'm thinking. You know? Yeah. Yeah. It's just ridiculous. Salad at home. Yeah. Yeah. Any I mean, place it, I'm going will have soup and salad. Like, I would go to a super salad, but I, I just don't have the right yoga pants and Ugg boots to go to on. <laughs> So I can. Sorry. Bye. Now, another uh, business that is no longer near my work is Chili's. Now, I never went there. I never went to this specific Chili's, but apparently Chili's is a cult. Uh, yes, we are. We are. I'm afraid of Chili's after reading that article. Good. Okay. Good. Uh, Maxwell, uh, I, I asked you to get me. A, a a beer from the fridge. It's not the fridge. That was the fridge. I know, but you got me a root beer. You see the <laughs> root R O O T. I don't want a root beer. I just want a beer beer. It's a silver thing. Remember the 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 Blue Mountains. It's a can, not a bottle. Good try. I know you can do it. <laughs> So the Chili's is gone, but the only bright spot to this uh, in memoriam is that the Chili's is gone, and they put in a Denny's. A Denny's? Denny's are disappearing. Yeah, except they just opened a new one, and I'm so shocked because I didn't think the new stores could open near me. Yeah. And I'm like, holy crap, there's a Denny's. Shocking. Absolutely shocking. Did not think that, that stores could open. I thought stores could just die. Are you sure you are not in a Twilight Zone episode? Pretty sure. Pretty sure I'm not. Pretty okay, sure I'm not. Because, like, just about all the Denny's by us all close all of a sudden. That is really sad because I freaking love Denny's. And. and so I find it really strange that one would open by you. Okay, yeah, no, that's a bit odd. We have a Denny's here in in a beautiful downtown scenic nowhere, Oklahoma. We have a Denny's here, and Natasha has banned it from our family. <laughs> okay, because because they stopped carrying the one thing she would always get, which is. Jalapeno bottle caps. Okay. 
it, it, like a jalapenos, like a but popper? then they're like, yeah, yeah, like a jalapeno popper. Yeah. It, and and it, it was an appetizer. So then she would go to Danny's and for whatever reason, like if when she was pregnant with Eleanor, uh, Eleanor would be kicking and fussing. But then she would go to Denny's and get jalapeno poppers and the baby would calm down hmm. for whatever reason. So we would go there all the time. And so she would go and she would get the special, the the appetizer special. And the appetizer special is you can get two appetizers for for this one low price. And so Natasha would go in and say, okay, two orders of jalapeno poppers, please. And they would give her this mountain of jalapeno poppers. And then once Eleanor was born, they just stopped making them. Those bastards. So Natasha literally said, Denny's is dead to us. <laughs> and I, then we now all, that you explain it, though, I can understand yeah. her reasoning. Yeah. And then the rest of us are like, wait a second. When did you become Batman? And she said, when they took away my jalapeno poppers. <laughs> That's what became the darkness. <laughs> so in this shopping center. There are four main stores, four anchor stores, side by side by side by side, the big four. Yeah. Michael's, Bed Bath & Beyond, Us, and a Toys R Us. Oh. Michael's left, and I was upset about that because the people who go to a Michael's <laughs> definitely come to a bookstore. But once Michael's left, that space is now taken over like three months out of the year by a giant spirit halloween store so bye bye michaels uh and uh i hope the door hits your butt on the way out but like that sounds like that makes it sound like so much the shopping area of the old world Uh uh-huh you know yep like Mm -hmm. people will come to your store not to buy books anymore <clears throat> just to see them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty much. That's We're a new- book? Wow. So Michael's yeah. is gone. Bed Bath & Beyond is still around. We share a wall. I personally don't care, but it brings people into the store. Then there's us. And now Toys R Us. We share a wall with them. We love them. One of our managers came from Toys R Us. And so we have like an in with the Toys R Us. And we have a really good relationship. And now, of course, they're one of the stores that is closing down. Oh, no. They're right next door. Do you realize how much that is going to freaking hurt us? (laughs) Yeah. That is going to hurt us so bad that Toys R Us is closing down. The Toys R Us near my work, yes, Maxwell is closing down. Not all of the Toys R Uses are closing down. There's still a Toys R Us in Oklahoma City and Tulsa. So an hour or three hours away. So hooray. Toys R Us by your work. They are closing down in like April. Yeah. I like it. Yeah, I like it too. The other toys are us. Just the ones that by my dad's work. Yeah. Yeah, it sucks. It sucks. The managers at my store dream of moving our store to the uh uh to the big exploding area four or five miles away where all the action in town is happening. But in order for that to happen, we would suddenly have to be making two or three times as much as we are now. Basically, we'd have to become a a superstore overnight. Uh Uh-huh. And that doesn't seem to be happening soon. So we're basically just kind of stuck in this disappearing shopping center. And that sucks. But this company is a survivor. On my first day, someone said that I would be uh, out of a job within a week. And again, 17 freaking years. Okay. (laughs) What, Bella? You just came in hot. You just came in hot. What's going on? What's going on? I thought I should tell you. Okay. Uh, you know how they're doing the Tide Pod Challenge? Yeah, I'm aware of the Tide Pod oh, Challenge. We've Tide talked Pod about it, it on the podcast, yes? I just remembered. My friend showed me a picture. Um, apparently, some dudes were vaping Tide Pods. Vaping Tide Pods. Yes. It was amazing, and it, it was perfect. Okay. I'm going to take your word for that. 
And just to let you know, I'm not judging right now. <laughs> not judging at all. Sure. I have created a brand new internet challenge that is going to take the internet by storm. I can't tell it to you yet because it's not at this part of the podcast. And also, it's really dirty. <laughs> it's okay. filthy, but it's going to take the internet by storm. Bella, just wait. Uh, okay. Yes, Maxwell? I got a game for internet is going to blow the, the internet away. Okay, so, what's your game? Maxwell punches a bad guy. You have to get to the treasure chest, and the treasure chest is going to be a Lego one, and it's going to have some stuff in it, and uh, it's going to have a Lego, uh, uh, you know, a ninja mask, and so you get yeah. all three parts of them, even including the head, you can make the green ninja and the fire ninja and the water <clears throat> ninja. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay, but one one small critique, Maxwell. <clears throat> Whenever you say and, you need to follow it with, wait, there's more. Yeah, that's a good point, Maxwell. That's a good note. That's a good note for you. And you will have a a, a an amazing career uh with with Ronco and Ronco um, yeah. Or a Sham Wows. Sham Wows, yeah. Yeah. You could you, you could sell Sham Wows, Maxwell. And, and that guy is dead, so there's like there's like a need there. Yeah. A yeah. need that needs to be filled. It's like a chamois. It's like a towel. It's like a sponge. A regular towel doesn't work wet. This works wet or dry. You can use it for the house, the car, the boat, the RV. Well, it holds 20 times its weight in liquid. Look at this. It just does the work. Why do you want to work twice as hard? It doesn't drip. You know, you watch it in the washing machine. Made in Germany. You know the Germans always have had to make good stuff. Yeah. I had that commercial memorized for a yeah. while case you couldn't tell finally this week i am going to be throwing away the script as i like to do from time to time and talk openly and honestly about my next story time okay at first when i first started doing story time i didn't choose what story times we did because there was a woman our community relations manager at the store in california and because she had one child it was understood that she knew what kids would want for story times. Uh So she would choose all the story times. And and so I didn't choose them. When she left, I had been doing story time for about a year and a half. And so it was decided that I would choose what story times we did. So I chose the story times for about seven years. And I would do different story times. Pajama story time and pirate story time, superhero story time. I would do story time for whatever movies were about to come out. Yeah. And I would do a lot of wrong holiday story times. Like it's uh, January 1st and it's super freezing cold. And I come in in shorts and with, you know, white stuff on my nose with a beach ball. (laughs) Because it's summer story time on January 1st. Yes, Maxwell. Yes. You keep trying to interrupt me secretly. What? Dude. Bro. Dude, bro. I just wanted to say, I just wanted to uh, say, can we take a break now? Mm. <laughs> Why? Because I need to do a part of the poop on film. Okay, no, I'm trying to wrap up this segment here. Okay. Like to wrap the podcast? No, not wrap the podcast up, just wrap up this one segment, this one part. Okay. Do we want to take a break? I don't know, Maxwell. <laughs> he really want to do he really wants his own podcast then when I went from the store in California to the store in Oklahoma uh, somewhere in between there uh, corporate made story times mandatory in the sense that before every store had to do a story time on 
uh, one story time a week. Yeah. But now every store has to do a story time every Saturday at 11 o'clock, and you have to read this one book. Yeah. And so every week they pick a different book for us to read, and most of the time it's good. Sometimes it's a book I don't like, but I always try and make it work. This Saturday, in celebration of Black History Month, I will be reading, and, and every store will be reading, the book I Am Harriet Tubman. Okay. And it's a it's a it's a good book and it's an important book is is what I keep saying and it, it, it's really good. The only problem is is that I get a lot of really young kids. Yeah. Like 2 years old, 3 years old, 4 years old, 5 years old and this book deals real heavily with racism and violence and slavery. Yeah. It deals a lot with slavery, and it, well, I am, you know, go figure. <laughs> and I'm usually really hyperactive and interactive, and I'm, and what am I going to be doing? Hey, kids, who here knows what a slave is? You know, <laughs> real, real nervous about this. I get really, yeah. I get really young kids, and I, I have no idea how I'm going to tackle this. Last week at story time, I'm like, okay, so next. Saturday, we're going to be reading uh, the book, I Am Harriet Tubman. And uh, do you kids know what I'm going to be doing next week for story time? Really, if anyone has any ideas, please let me know. I'm not at all nervous. <laughs> so, so I read the book ahead of time just to prepare myself. And, oh, Jesus Christ, this is going to be difficult. When we, weren't, when we didn't do what we were told, our owners would whip us or worse. <laughs> And it's like, oh, Jesus, I don't know. I don't know how I'm going to do this. Yeah. Kids expect me to read the book wrong and be hyperactive and interactive. But how can I do that with I am Harriet Tubman? Yes, I, I understand. I, I see the dilemma here. I don't know how I'm doing this, and I'm uh, really panicky about it. It's not easy to make slavery funny. <laughs> yeah. How can I make slavery fun and interactive for the children without being publicly shamed? Yeah. So this is going to be fun. And I'm in Oklahoma. And I'm in Oklahoma, too. It's not like if I was in California, then uh, people would hear that I'm doing this story time and they would say, oh, this is important. Yes, I'm going to get my whole organization to come. Oh. I'm going to I'm going to get I'm going to get my mother's group in and we're going to be there and we're going to support you and yes I'm going to can I can I mention this in our newsletter oh yes and I'll have so many people show up and all their kids will be excited that I'm learning about history now I'm in the middle of freaking Oklahoma <laughs> reading this book about how whites are bad yeah I have no idea how I'm going to do this at all <laughs> you know <laughs> So this is going to be fun. Yay. It, it sounds like it's going to be a riot. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be it's hilarious. Gonna be a good time. Yeah. And that is it for notes from the bookstore this week. And remember boys and girls and gender transformers, you too can save 10% on all of your purchases. And all you have to do is get Donald Trump to go on a snipe hunt, which <laughs> I'm pretty sure it would be fairly easy, right? I mean, if you really think about it, yeah. oh, I'm the best at finding snipes. I many people uh, have said that I'm the best snipe hunter ever in See, the world. That's the part that scares me is that he would get one. He mm -hmm. would, he would come back with a fucking snipe. Hillary Clinton never got an a, a snipe. She paid people off to get sniped for her. Yeah, it would be fairly easy to get Donald Trump to go on a snipe hunt, is what I'm saying. Yeah, but I'm thinking, like, like it, it's, it's ridiculous that a president of the United States would be going on a snipe hunt. The only way to make it more ridiculous is for him to actually catch a snipe. Yeah, 